Hey guys, welcome back. We're in the fab shop and just getting going on the frame. Uh, I think all my chores are done for the days and I've got uh, a few hours to myself. Okay, uh, frame dimensions are the, the most critical dimension. I'm keeping this kind of stock, kind of custom, but I'm keeping the 29 and a quarter width so from outside edge to outside edge 29 and a quarter and you can see I've got the rear cross member on already and I'm working on the spring location and there's a lot to figure out on this to try and get a uh, a large Cummins 4BT in here so uh, let's start at the back here Uh, as you can see, I think you can see, I am TIG welding everything in. Uh, not just going at this with a with a MIG gun and hoping for penetration. Uh, everything is being TIG welded. So I made this cross member a while ago. I put a tow hitch in it. Um, I'm not going to put the stock V bracing in here and stuff. I'm going to put a large fuel tank in the back. So. Uh, I'm going to put some bracing out here and I'll put some little bracing in here to strengthen up the rear cross member and I'll put a fuel tank in here uh, here's some springs I had custom made uh, this is a 12 leaf pack and um, let's see I believe the factory rating on that was 1580 per spring uh, I did give that to the spring manufacturer. We increased that to close to 2,000 per spring. So we have a 4,000 pound um, set back here. Uh, the Dana 70 is going in the back, so I know we can handle that. We can handle the, um, the welder in there. Uh, on the factory 3B with the welder, the leaf springs were broken. The overload springs were broken. It was a disaster. So I made sure to have these extra heavy built. There's still the one and three quarter. I'm still using stock using new old stock seal tested spring hangers. There'll be a greasable bolt. There'll be a bushing in there. Uh, on the back I'm not sure if I'll use the uh, the C-shape greasable shackle or if I'll use the regular uh, you know two side plate shackles. These are built even though this is a 3B I'm kind of calling this. Uh, these are CJ5 springs. Uh, they're longer than CJ3B and I was able to get them uh, basically as heavy, heavy as I wanted. So the back is taken care of and the distance here um, is quite a bit bigger on a CJ5 than 3B. So these are CJ5 springs. You can see I have already taken all the bushings out. I do not like factory bushings. I told them don't put bushings in and guess what? They came with bushings. Uh, it's just a steel jacket with rubber inside. They last like a year and then they're 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 just junk. So um, I always put I always make bronze bushings and um, or some kind of oil light material and then put the greasable bolt in there, the factory bolt. Okay, on the front springs, uh, these are a 10 leaf pack. And let me take a look at my paper here. Those from the factory were 1130 um, per spring. So would that give us 2260? Uh, I had the spring manufacturer bring that up to about 1500 pounds per spring to give us a, a, a 3000 pound set up in the front. There's going to be the Cummins 4BT and uh, the winch out front. So I want some heavy springs up here. And uh, they have the extra military wrap there. And we use a little bit thicker material. And that's the good thing about having springs custom made. Uh, I know it's getting harder and harder to have springs custom made because shops are taking forever to get them out and a lot of people never came back to work after um, the, the world shut down and stuff so 
Um, spring manufacturers are taking a long time, but it's worth it because I got exactly what I needed for springs and we'll be all set there. Uh, I am figuring out there's my axle center line. There is my dimension for my spring hanger center lines. And the same thing in the back. There's my center line. And we got 44, um, 7812 is the decimal. So we'll split that up. Uh, we'll go toward the rear and toward the front. Get our center lines perfect. Um, there's a lot to build in a frame. You got to make sure everything is square. You got to make sure your axles are square in there. You got to make sure your spring hangers are perfect. And, um, the, you know, it's no joke building a frame. You don't want to go down the road crooked. So, uh, everything is sitting on top now. Uh, it was just easier for me to lay out, you know, just looking at it. Uh, everything will be underneath. But I do have to flip this. These rails are extremely heavy. I don't think I can do this alone, so I'll either have to bring an engine hoist in here or uh, hope for the best that somebody might show up and give me a hand. So, probably get an engine hoist in here and pick up one side and flip it towards me. But um, this is going to have to go, you know, up and down and over and stuff a, a bunch of times. Um, but I'll, I'll probably get some kind of lifting device in here and, uh, and get it figured out. But um, I want to get at least the springs in and try and figure out where the motor is going. I'm trying to keep the body almost in the original place and shove the motor forward. So I will have to build extended 3B fenders and I'll have to make an extended 3B hood. And, uh, and then I'm going to have the... Uh, driver and passenger seat and then I'm gonna have a bulkhead in there like a uh, Well kind of like the scrambler. We'll have a bulkhead in there and then I'll have a long bed. I'm figuring almost a six-foot bed on this uh, This frame is now 14 feet long and I don't think I'll be cutting too much off of it So I'll have almost a six-foot bed back there. We'll put some wheelhouses in there I'm gonna try and make most of the body out of uh, 14 gauge I want a very heavy body on this and I have plenty of power with the Cummins 4BT to uh, pull around anything that I can put on this chassis so a very heavy body uh, nice plate in the back for the welder and stuff I still got to get the welder figured out haven't haven't gotten that far yet but uh, I do want to get this rolling and get the 70 in the back and the 44 in the front and uh, then we can start playing around with the engine. Okay guys, I got, I got it managed to, uh, to be flipped. Uh, it is a terribly heavy frame, but I did a little bit at a time. Uh, I got it flipped, and I'm starting in the rear. And these are the very first two spring mounts. I'm going to square up on this frame and get these two in. Then I'm going to come down to this side. And this is the front, and I'm going to get these two in next. And then we will pull diagonals and stuff and check our rear hangers once we get these front ones tacked in. And I'm just going to tack them, and then we're going to pull a lot of dimensions and stuff and, uh, and make sure everything is nice and square. And we'll do the same thing in the front. We'll get these guys tacked in, and then we'll worry about these front ones. And like I say, we're going to square every which way and make sure the, uh, the axle is going to be nice and straight in there. So I've got it kind of jigged up a little bit with some, uh, some wooden blocks here. It's just so it's, uh, let me show you here. So the long rails are parallel to the bench. And it just makes it easier for, for measuring and stuff. So uh, springs are sitting here. I've got all my dimensions. And um, we'll start making the bronze bushings and stuff and uh, figure out what we're going to do for the, uh, the shackle in there. And uh, we just continue on with this. Um, I'm not going to put the body mounts on now. I'm going to wait till I build the, um, 
the body to put the body mounts in. Uh, I'm just right now I'm just basically trying to get the springs and the hangers and all that stuff on so I can get it rolling. Um, that's the main thing. So I'm not going to sandblast it after this. I'll wait until uh, I have everything fit. But I'll, I'll get the uh, the axles kind of just hung in there for a little bit, get it rolling, uh, and then start building the body. So it's kind of backwards the way I'm doing this, but it's just when, you, when you're doing custom stuff like this, it's just how it has to be. You got to put stuff together, take it apart, put it together, take it apart. So I'll get the springs in, get the axles in, get some wheels on it, and then. Um, start fitting everything and then take everything all apart sandblast the frame uh, prime it and paint it and stuff so uh, it's the only way I can really get everything in order uh, there's a lot going on a lot of stuff I gotta pay attention to so um, custom builds can be tricky sometimes but they're worth it in the end so hang in there with me there'll be more to come as I get free time uh, I'm just stealing away a little time here and there to uh, to work on this but um, as I get more time, I'll show the frame and, uh, and more of it. So uh, that's all I got for, you to, uh, for today. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.